All right, everybody, welcome to uh, Conversations with Colleges. Um, I am Nicole, I'm your Zoom producer. Please say hello in the chat and uh, please feel free to type questions as we go along. The colleges are each gonna present some information, but um, before we get started, we'll uh, get Ginny to introduce the topic and herself. Yes, and I'm going to give us just a couple more minutes for people to log in and then we're gonna start because I know your time is precious. Give it one more. Okay, it's a it's eleven oh two. I'm just gonna let people keep on signing in, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover. Um, I want I'd like to welcome you to College Conversations with Art Colleges on behalf of Sage Scholars and our founder, Dr. James Johnston. Uh, my name is Jenny Johnson, and I am the Consulting Director of School Counseling and Student Engagement. So welcome. This program is brought to you by Ready Set College, which is a product of Sage Scholars. Uh, Ready Set College is a college search engine with, which matches careers, including assessments and majors to appropriate college. It is also dedicated to providing information on college funding and has a library of useful articles and takeaway. Today's presenters are, represent some of our premier art colleges that are members of our Sage Scholars Consortium of Colleges. They are Moore College of Art and Design, SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, and College for Creative Studies. But before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, all participants will remain on mute during our presentation. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. There will be time for Q&A at the end. This program is being recorded and will be sent to you after the presentation. I encourage you to share it with not only your students and fellow counselors, but also with your art teachers. This is a one of several third, uh, third Thursday college conversations. We've already had one on liberal arts and one on STEM. Our following one will be in March, which will be on colleges with learning disability that support students with learning differences. And our presenters will be Landmark and Lynn. And then in May, we will conclude with a program on bachelor's to MD programs. I would like to now turn the program over to my dear friend, John Squire from Moore College of Art and Design. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Jonathan Squire. Um, I use he, him pronouns, and I am the Dean of Admissions at Moore College of Art and Design in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, to talk a little bit about Moore, um, so Moore is a historically all women's undergraduate college um, that has evolved to include educational and continuing education for our graduate students. Um, our admissions policy has recently been updated um, and we do admit students that are gender non-conforming, non-binary and trans. Um, we're a forum for big ideas and um, a champion for creative expression as a means to connect local and, and global communities. Moore offers nine majors, all in art and design, um, with our newest being our film and digital cinema program, uh, which was launched this year. Uh, we just built a $2 million new facility uh, for our film students, um, and we are very excited to kick off that program. Um, Moore also offers 11 minors, um, which also includes art history, business uh, for some of our students who are pursuing an entrepreneurial career um, and textile design, which was uh, actually the first major um, offered at Moore College. We are located on the Philadelphia Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the city of Philadelphia, um, it is kind of the central point of the city, kind of where a lot of major events happen. A lot of, it's called the cultural district, district 
um, a lot of museums, uh, the Academy of Natural Science, Franklin Institute. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Philadelphia, um, but know us by the movie Rocky, uh, the Rocky steps are just located right here um, at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, uh, which is iconic. Um, so at Moore, our focus is really on providing students with career opportunities, the intersection of creative passion and, and career success. Um, our students are required to participate in their internship um, in their junior year. Um, most of our students do complete multiple internships during their time at Moore. Um, our internship is actually a paid internship. So the college actually pays students in places where um, students are not able to receive compensation for their internships. Um, what we look to provide our students is relevant career experience um, for what they wanna do after they graduate um, from the college. So just a little bit about our application requirements. I know myself and uh, my colleagues on the call today will be talking a lot about the portfolio components. Um, Moore does require a, an application and we are members of the Common App. Um, we require eight to 12 pieces of artwork and um, students' transcripts. We are totally test optional when it comes to SAT scores, letters of recommendation, essays and resumes, um, but certainly um, students who do submit those materials, they are considered and read um, you know, through the admissions process. On the portfolio side, um, and every school does um, have some different requirements when it comes to portfolios. Um, ours is certainly unique in that we um, take any media or style um, that a student submits for their portfolio. Um, so we don't necessarily need to see um, animations for students that may be inter interested in our animation and game art program. You know, we wanna see that the student um, can be successful in that first year, which is our foundation year. Um, it could be sketchbook works, photography. Um, some of our fashion students have um, observational drawings, which, which are really important, um, but we do strongly encourage observational drawing, but it, again, it is not required, um, just needs to be relevant within the past two years. Um, so here are some of the do's um, when it comes to student portfolios and what we like to see. Um, on, on the screen is some examples of um, student work that was submitted um, by our applicants. Um, certainly sketchbook pieces are really important, observational work, um, emotive work. You know, we really want the students to emphasize their conceptual and artistic strengths. Um, so we really want the students to feel confident that their pieces are the best of what they've completed. Um, we offer a variety of different ways to connect with students. Um, certainly students submit their applications and portfolio materials through slide room, um, but we do provide opportunities for students to meet with our admissions team where they can go over uh, a student's portfolio in an informal setting um, where they will provide that student with feedback on their work. Um, we also provide free opportunities for our students um, through our portfolio boot camp series, um, which is something that we started during the pandemic. Um, we wanted to fill a need uh, where students were getting feedback on their work, but also, um, you know, kind of an opportunity to engage with the college. Um, so we provide free portfolio boot camps to our students in the months of September, October, and November um, that cover different elements of the students' portfolios. Uh, we also provide um, design and draw opportunities for our students, which are also free. Um, and those opportunities happen in the springtime where students can hop on a Zoom with some of my team here in admissions and um, meet other artists, but also work collaboratively on um, a project, uh, which is an exciting opportunity. Some of the things we don't wanna see um, in our student portfolios um, is fan art. Um, obviously we get a lot of students who submit um, fan art, um, it is not encouraged the students to submit fan art, anything done on line paper, anything that's still a work in progress, um, and any master work copies, um, things like Starry Night, um, any famous artworks, you know, certainly is important for a student to grow, um, but not something we typically um, want to see um, in a student portfolio. Um, also celebrity portraits, portraits um, you know, unless the student did get Beyonce to sit down for a still, we wanna see kind of more authentic um, portraits from the students. And this is just a little bit about our foundation year here at Moore. Um, students take two foundation design courses, two drawing courses, 
a visual thinking course, um, and then some liberal arts courses, which are um, required of our students. Um, also within the first year, our students do um, take courses within their majors. Our photography and interior design courses, take, uh, students take courses um, in the fall semester and the rest of our programs have our bridge to major courses that happen um, in, the, in the spring semester. Um, but students really kind of gain a grounding within our foundation program, um, which brings them to a level of success in um, you know, the upperclassmen years for our students. Um, and that concludes my piece. Um, certainly the QR code, you can learn a little bit more information about more. I'm happy to answer any questions about the college um, in the next portion of the presentation, but um, I did wanna introduce my co colleague, um, Car Carla Gonzalez from CCS. Hello everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I am going to share my screen, which is here. Um, so the College for Creative Studies is in Detroit, Michigan. And um, one of the, you know, it's nice to be here with these other schools because I think we all do a lot of things very similarly, but we also have some of our own sort of special or niche areas that we may um, be able to uh, help you understand actually exist and then also that so that you can share that with your students. So here at CCS, um, we do focus on preparing students for creative careers, just like all the other uh, schools here. Um, and these are just briefly some examples of the um, works that our uh, alumni are working on. You might be more familiar with what we're showing here versus names. Uh, we like to kind of show the variety of work and areas and industries that our students can move into um, once they're you know, done with their program here at CCS. So we are a, a you know, fairly small size. We're 1,400 undergraduate students. Um, we have 12 different majors uh, running the gamut from crafts and material studies to uh, product design and transportation design communication design, advertising design, and more. Um, and so I'm not gonna talk about all of these, but just wanted to kind of give you an example of the types of things that uh, creative careers can lead to. Um, I think a lot of our um, students and high schools um, sometimes really focus their classroom work on the fine arts, which is amazing, which is great. But I think that there is a whole world related to design that often gets forgotten. And so we do want to highlight that there are lots and lots of opportunities uh, for creative thinking and problem solving, uh, not just in the fine uh, and applied arts, but in the product design, um, transportation design, as I mentioned, the design areas. Um, at CCS, our majors run the gamut. You can see we have our practice as well. Um, and then uh, here I'm going to skip to our programs really quickly. We do have graduate and undergraduate programs. These are all of our different majors. Um, obviously, uh, as it says here, study across the globe, we have stu uh, study abroad and internship options. Our students do not have a required internship uh, semester, but they are highly encouraged. And many of our students do at least one or two internships. And we have a careers development office of partnerships um, that really support our students in finding those internship opportunities. And like more, our, inter our students are essentially um, encouraged not to take an internship unless it, unless it is for pay. And so our career development office is helping them find those paid opportunities. And in many, in some, I shouldn't say many, in some cases we've had students go abroad and do internships in Germany or uh, China, elsewhere, uh, to get that additional experience. Um, so, uh, hold on, let me show real quick, uh, just in case you're curious about our campus. We are in the heart of Detroit's uh, Cultural Center. Um, we've been here for over 100 years teaching art and design. We have two sites, the Walter and Josephine Ford Campus and the Taubman Center for Design Education. Um, housing on both sites and our studios and our facilities are outstanding. I mean, we put a lot of focus and energy onto ensuring that our students have the tools 
materials and equipment needed to make whatever it is they come up with. So um, whether that's animation and film uh, or modeling cars and clay for transportation design or our fashion program um, really uh, is just, and, and also we have a color and material library, which is unusual for an undergraduate program, but the color and material library is a supplement to our, you know, quote unquote, regular uh, digital images and, and periodicals and books library. Um, so that's a really excellent ad. Um, list of facilities here um, and just an image of some of our dorm spaces. I wanted to talk a little bit about our admissions process. It's very similar to Moore's. Um, we do have a free online application. However, we are not on the Common App. So it is an independent application um, and we try to keep it streamlined. Uh, so it is not overwhelming, but your students will not find us on the Common App. So we do need to um, encourage you to follow uh, the admissions links and pages on our website, collegeforcreativestudies.edu. Um, but it's a free online application. We do require transcripts and we do require eight to 12 pieces of artwork as well. Um, we do not review or consider any standardized tests from domestic applicants for international applicants. We do need proof of English proficiency. And so if they've attended a high school or college where the primary language of instruction is English, this test can be waived, but if they have not, then they do need to supply either an IELTS, TOEFL, Duolingo, English test, or if for whatever reason they're taking the ACT or SAT instead of those tests, we're happy to look at that for international uh, students with English as a second language. Um, our portfolio examples um, are, you know, again, similar to Moore's. We have some of the same don'ts, so I won't repeat them. Um, but what I can say is that we also do not require the artwork submitted in a portfolio to represent the student's intended major. We fully recognize that students may want to explore something totally new and different in college, and we are very open to that. We recognize they may not have had a chance to learn how to draw cars, for example, in high school. Um, and so we are totally open to teaching them. What we do want to see is where they're at and what skills they do bring to the table. Um, and so with um, us, we do have drawing requirements for four of our majors, and they include transportation design, illustration, entertainment arts animation, and entertainment arts game. So those four majors do require drawing in the portfolio, and that can be drawing from imagination or from observation. And just to clarify, in case anybody has a question, drawing from observation is simply drawing what's in front of you, right? So if that's a simple still life or a self-portrait or a portrait of your friend or your bedroom or the view outside your window, all of that is observational drawing from real life. Um, versus drawing from a photograph. And I don't know how many of you know, but students sometimes lean on the photography, you know, as a reference quite a bit. And you do get um, some flattening of space. Um, you get some dulling of light. You know, it doesn't really represent life well if you're drawing from a photo. Drawing from life gives you a lot of additional opportunities to think about things like perspective and proportion and how to represent space. Um, in your work. And so we do encourage students who are interested in uh, drawing focused majors, let's call them, um, to do some of that in practice um, and show that in their portfolio. For all of our other majors, they are not required to include drawing, but surely can if that's what they do. We do accept 3D work, digital uh, design work, digital illustrations. If a student has had experience making clothing or um, you know, installation pieces, videography, film, all of those types of media are welcome in the portfolio. We do ask that students consider things like total size of files, right? We wanna be able to open them. If they're film or video files, we're asking them to keep them at a maximum of about three minutes. So if it's a reel showing us highlights of their work, that's really great. 
Um, if that's all they have created and they are not submitting additional work, it could go up to six minutes or you know eight different snippets or pieces of, of work. Um, we do also stress quality over quantity. We would really prefer to see a student's strongest work versus a smattering of different things they've tried. Um, because if they've tried ceramics, but the work didn't turn out the way they intended, or is not as strong as they hoped, we'd rather not see it. We'd rather see what they feel like they have achieved a level of success with. And uh, just some more examples here. These are drawings uh, examples here. And again, um, any material or media is fine. Please no lined paper. What we like to see in a portfolio is intention, right? That a student's not just gathering up some stuff that they had, but that there's some intent and attention being paid to what is being presented and that the intent is to put their best foot forward. Um, at CCS, we also have a concept design program in our entertainment arts major. This is a highly selective program. We only uh, bring in a cohort of 10 students each year for this program um, for students who are interested in concept design which is different than visual development, but um, I can go into that if anybody has a question. Um, but this is a very specific format and a content request for the concept design portfolio. Details on that can be found on our website. Um, like everybody else, we have the usual deadlines. Um, and uh, for any student, hold on, I wanna go to pre-college. Um, I think someone asked in the chat, how do students who don't have access to art classes develop work for portfolio? Our recommendation is that they consider a summer program. I think each of our schools offers a summer opportunity. Um, we also offer uh, dual enrollment online so students can earn college credit through live classes online uh, during the school year, fall and winter. Um, and then in the summer, we also have non-credit opportunities, weekend opportunities, uh, both on campus and online as well. So take a look at that and encourage students. Um, I would like to now invite uh, Laura Gregg from uh, Savannah College of Art and Design to um, share her screen. Yes. Did I... Hi everyone, don't quite have permission yet. Oh, there we go. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Lauda Gregg and I am the Director of Recruitment and Admission at SCAD and I oversee the Northeast area. I saw someone in the chat is here from Hartford, Connecticut and that is currently where I am. Um, just after this uh, presentation, I'm gonna go visit with some students. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and with that, I will get started with uh, my presentation now that I am able to share my screen. Okay, perfect. So I am here to represent SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, we are located uh, globally actually, uh, but we have two domestic locations, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, my presentation does have a few videos, which I'm excited to share with you. I think it's great to show some visuals um, to go along if you've never experienced campus. Um, so with that, this little video does a great job giving you an overview of the institution um, and who we are in the creative space. And actually, I don't know that I optimized my sound, so I'm going to stop sharing for one moment and do that again to make sure that you all hear the videos. There we go. I'm driven to create, to be expressive, to collaborate with only the best and across disciplines. The most exciting field to be in is design, because a designer has to think about people, about technology, about the activities that are taking place. It gives you the license to explore and investigate and to try to create a system that enhances life. All you have to do is create. Sketch really great at giving me and giving all the students the ability to build things and make things. We have immersive reality, the latest AR VR equipment, and we're super proud to say that we're the first creative university to have an XR stage. This is a whole new paradigm for shooting film and visual effects. 
Well, SCAD's teaching philosophy is built on design thinking. With programs like the Business of Beauty and Fragrance, SCAD students go on to become entrepreneurs and pursue creative careers with top companies around the world. SCAD does an amazing job at making industry connections and making things available to students that might not be otherwise possible. Hey, Bees. Hey, SCAD. Hello, SCAD. I absolutely love SCAD. It's been amazing to have STAT as a touchpad for resources, for inspiration, for people that just really believe in you and will do whatever they can to help you succeed. I am a designer. I'm an entrepreneur. Storyteller. Thanks to SCAD, my future as a creative professional is real. It's happening. You are the next incarnation of this beautiful planet that needs design, that needs beauty. That needs your mind and your spirit and your energy, your power, your unique voice. This is SCAD. One, two, three. Oh, oh, no. To graduate as salutatorian here, as the first member of my family to attend a college in the U.S., it's just an incredible honor. Because of SCAD, I am doing what I really, truly love to do. It's been a blessing. I like that video because I think it gives a great overview if you've not engaged with us in the past of who we are and the types of programs that we have to offer. Um, something that I really like about um, what the video shows is that we really are a creative university. I tend to shy away from saying I'm an art school only because um, when students are thinking about art school, typically they're thinking more fine and visual arts, um, whereas at SCAD we have over 100 degree programs that really reach far beyond the fine and visual arts and the applied arts um, with programs like immersive reality and industrial design and architecture um, and interactive design and game development. We do have majors that really um, satisfy the interests of all creative students, not just students who um, are creating work that is, um, like I said, fine and visual art. So um, the majors at SCAD, we have about 43 majors and over 75 minors together, over 100 degree programs. We always encourage students to diversify where they can and add a minor or a double major where they can in order to diversify their skill set. Um, and like I said, um, add in that extra touch of, um, of interest. We are located in Georgia primarily. We have two domestic locations in Georgia. Um, this photo represents our campus locations. The top left is the Atlanta campus representation. So in Atlanta, we are a small footprint, but in a pretty large city. So we've got about seven buildings and around 3,400 students that study at the Atlanta campus. Right under that photo is representative of our Savannah location. Savannah is our founding city. Um, and the students that study there um, are really immersed in the historic downtown area. Um, we're really woven into the fabric of historic downtown Savannah. We have about 80 buildings throughout historic downtown, and we have about 11,000 students that study at SCAD Savannah. Over on the top right is our study abroad location in Lacoste, France, which is located in the south of France in the Provence region. And this is a location where students who are uh, SCAD students can attend at any point in their education. It is a SCAD campus. Um, what's really nice about this is that they, they sort of have a, an abroad experience woven into their education. Not every student chooses to go. I'm not sure why. Um, however, every student has the opportunity to go. They don't have to do an exchange with another institution abroad. They don't have to do any transfer credits. It is a SCAD campus that happens to be in France. Um, so it is a study abroad location in that students can't go and stay for four years and graduate. Um, they only go for up to one quarter. And then the top, or excuse me, the bottom right photo represents our e-learning platform, SCAD Now, uh, which is available to students all over the world. We do have full online degree programs and also our on-ground students can take advantage of our e-learning platform to create some flexibility in their schedule as well. To talk a little bit about our student body, um, all together with all of our campuses, we have about 15,000 students that study at SCAD and our students are coming from all 50 states and over 100 countries. I think we're actually at 124 countries. 
one of the themes that we are talking about today with my colleagues is uh, the fact that all of our institutions do a wonderful job preparing students for creative careers. We want to ensure that they are getting an education that is setting them up to enter the job market and have sustainable careers in the creative space. Um, at SCAD, we're really, really proud to say that we've got a 99% employment rate for the fourth year in a row. Uh, this number represents the class of 2020, letting us know that within 10 months of graduation, they were either employed, seeking further education in a master's program or both. Um, and you know, it's really easy to send out a survey and 10 people answer and they all say yes and you get 99%. Um, so I do like to talk about the knowledge rate behind this number, uh, which for this particular year was 87% and it's always been between 82 and now 87%. So that's 87% of the class answering and 99% of that number reporting back to us that they are landing on their feet and they're getting jobs that they deem are creative, um, which reinforces what we're doing. So the next video that I wanted to show you was specifically about our creative career preparation and where our alumni are working and also who is coming to SCAD to seek talent. Um, so throughout the video, you'll see as folks are talking uh, little blurbs about who they are. So I do encourage you to pay attention to see if they are an alumni and what they're doing, what their job title is, or if they are um, someone who comes to SCAD, an industry partner who spends time on our campus um, seeking talent and uh, spending time in the classroom and doing recruitment. My two greatest lessons that I learned from SCAD were learning the structure of the industry and, and the strong work ethic, but I think you really hone those skills at SCAD. The idea of collaboration with all majors happens so naturally at SCAD that it really is an outlet of incredible bursts of energy. SCAD is constantly staying very aware of industry trends and therefore kind of adapting curriculum to play into that and be able to have students be very prepared for real life after a graduation. Just seeing the depth, the amount of detail the students put in, and when you bring in people from all of those different disciplines together, it's really amazing what they can create. It really opens a lot of doors and a lot of opportunities become real possibilities here. SCAD offers lifelong support to alumni, whether you're seeking to advance in your creative career, launch your own venture, reconnect with your alumni network, or collaborate with SCAD. It's that network of support and encouragement, which is so critical to the success of myself and other people coming through SCAD. We are always top of mind with industry partners, so we connect with productions from Amazon, from Hulu, from NBC, CBS, you name it. These are life long relationships that you build here. We will always have your back and we will always look for ways to continue your success. Because of SCAD, I got my dream job at Disney. HBO Max, Netflix, IBM, Lenovo, Pixar Animation Studio. I got my dream job at Epic Games. When a student is applying to SCAD, they do not need to know what particular major they are wanting to pursue. We actually encourage students to be as open as possible. Um, so they are not applying to photography. They're not applying to immersive reality. They are just applying to SCAD. Uh, in, their, in their first year, year and a half, they are completing foundational courses. And that foundational coursework um, is really put into two buckets, one being foundations of design. Um, so every student, regardless of eventual major, will take color theory, drawing, one, two, design one and two, design thinking. Um, and then the other half of their coursework is general education courses that are liberal arts based. So they do all have to satisfy a number of hours in courses such as communications, behavioral sciences, mathematics, et cetera. Um, depending on the track that they're wanting to go on, it is their choice which courses they will satisfy the gen ed requirements with. Um, if students are coming in with AP credits or any dual enrollment credits from community colleges, typically they will satisfy satisfy the gen ed requirements first. Um, students will also during this time take introductory courses to different majors. Um, and then in their second year is when they'll actually declare. So students are not expected to know exactly what they are wanting to major in when applying to SCAD, which is a little bit uh, unique in, the, in being a creative university. They're not um, sort of pigeonholed into a program. We keep class sizes 
quite small at SCAD, although we have a large student body, our uh, professor to student ratio um, is we, um, we've got our studio classes that are capped at 15 um, and 20, depending on how deep in the major the student is in. And then the largest class a student will have at SCAD is 30, and that typically is their general education courses like a um, art history or a psychology, for example. The facilities are at SCAD are absolutely incredible. Um, I enjoyed hearing Carla talk about um, how awesome the facilities are at her institution. It really is incredible when a student is able to really immerse themselves uh, in a space where they can create whatever they want, whenever they want. Um, so these are just some photos of the spaces at SCAD. This is a lab full of 3D printers that students have access to. Um, we're really excited. We just finished um, construction on our first XR stage. Now we're working on the second one in Atlanta. Um, this technology is only two years old in the film industry. Um, and we now have two stages here at SCAD. So if you are familiar at all with film and television, um, surely you're familiar with what's going on in Georgia right now, which is has nothing to do with SCAD, but we're certainly reaping the benefits of that. And so are our students. Um, so when talking about XR technology, if you are familiar with green screen technology, this is sort of the newest iteration of that. Um, and it really allows for all the work that usually happens in post-production to happen as filming is going on. So the collaboration between those that work in that post-production process and in the um, filming process are coming together. So those interested in visual effects, special effects, um, animation, um, and of course, film and television are working uh, in tandem all at once. It's a LED screen that is um, slightly curved. Um, and like I said, we just wrapped construction in Savannah. Students are right now using this um, and it has started in, in Atlanta. So we're really excited. Technology is always changing at SCAD. We make sure that whatever our whatever software or whatever technology um, we have on campus is at the standard or above the standard of what industry is using. So what we'll do is we'll rotate technology out about every three to four years um, to ensure that that is the experience that our students are getting. Something to note about SCAD as well is that we do have a full intercollegiate athletic program. Um, so sometimes student uh, athletes who are also very creative sometimes feel like they have to make um, a decision when it comes to college to kind of give up one or the other. And that's not the case at SCAD. Um, we do, we are part of the NAIA. Um, we do have teams that compete. We recruit students to SCAD who are athletes to play that are on scholarship um, on our teams. And then we have a number of intramural sports as well where students can compete continue to pursue their athletics um, in university. Student life is really bustling at SCAD as well, over 100 student clubs on each campus, um, ranging from special interest clubs to academic clubs to multicultural clubs. Um, and so I think talking about student life is quite important. To touch on our application process, because it is a little bit different than most institutions, um, we actually do not require a portfolio for the admission process. Our portfolio requirement is for scholarship review. So it does end up being required because of course, I encourage all the students that I advise to submit a portfolio to, to get scholarship. We don't wanna leave money on the table. But in order for a student to be admitted to SCAD, we are looking for their transcript, we're looking for letters of recommendation and um, their personal statement or their um, statement of purpose is what we call it at SCAD. We are on the Common app. We also have a application directly on our website where students can apply. Um, so I think the biggest mistake that students make when it comes to applying to SCAD is waiting to, to start the process and waiting to submit the application until their portfolio is ready. Uh, we actually encourage students to get that application in first because we are gonna review all other materials first for admission before we're gonna move forward with review of the portfolio. So it's always my recommendation to students who are interested in SCAD to get that application in, to get the transcript sent over to us and all of the required materials um, because they will get assigned an advisor who will really walk them through the rest of the process. And that advisor talking about portfolio review is there to do that as well. So although those who are traveling on the road and engaging with students, like I have an appointment later today to do some portfolio reviews at a school, um, we are happy to do that when we are in your area. 
happy to do that over Zoom, but also your student's advisor once they apply is happy to ensure that your student um, is submitting the best of the best of the work that they've got so that they are reviewed as high as possible for scholarship. Um, so typically when I share this, I get questions and I see that some questions might be coming in right now, but I'm not able to pull it up. Um, they ask about, you know, well, what does it take for a student to be accepted? Is there a certain GPA requirement? We do have academic benchmarks that we're looking for. If a student does fall below that academic benchmark, our advisors are there to ask those questions, right? So whether that is submitting another letter of recommendation or submitting a letter of explanation or a statement of purpose if they didn't submit it initially so that we can really um, bring a holistic approach to the, to the review process um, when it comes to actually admitting them to SCAD. Once that student is admitted, they would submit the portfolio. Um, we have seven categories of portfolios. Again, like Carla said, at SCAD, we encourage students to submit their best work right now, their best foot forward. It has nothing to do with what they might wanna study at SCAD, um, has no bearing on the program of study. Um, oftentimes students don't know at this point and we are okay with that and we actually encourage it. So. Because of that, we offer such a wide range of portfolio submission um, options, ranging from business and marketing portfolios for our students who want to go a more business and entrepreneurial route because we do have a school of business innovation at SCAD. Um, we have an equestrian portfolio option for students who are in that world because we have an equestrian program at SCAD. We have a performing arts portfolio. We have a time-based portfolio for students who are submitting film or animations. We have a writing portfolio. So for the question that Carla was uh, talking about for how do we review students who don't have access to art classes. We have all the same resources. Um, as Carla said, a summer program, we totally encourage that. We also have dual enrollment online for high school students, but also there is a writing option for portfolio submission. Every student in high school has written something. And so it's five to 15 pages of your best work, whether that's research or poems or creative writing. So that writing portfolio is, um, really great for those students who maybe don't have an art portfolio or a visual portfolio to show at this moment. Um, and then of course we have the traditional visual art portfolio and that's 10 to 20 pieces of your best work. Um, like what John is, was saying earlier, we encourage students to submit only completed work to really pay attention to the presentation of their work, meaning the because um, we also use slide room, cropping, uh, lighting. We don't want to see anything on lined paper. We don't want to see any process work unless the process work is also including the finished piece. Um, and we discourage fan art. We want to see, you know, for students who are interested in animation and character development, we would much rather see uh, development of original characters versus replication of characters that already exist, et cetera. In the visual art portfolio, um, it is the most widely used portfolio because it's um, very uh, diverse in what you could submit. You can submit fashion to this portfolio. You can submit photography, sculpture, drawings, and paintings. Um, I do, you know, I do encourage students to try and be as directed as possible. We don't want to see just because you've got one of each of those mediums, we don't really want to see all of that. It's quality over quantity. It's consistency. If you are want, if a student is wanting to uh, show that they do have some drawings and they also have some paintings and they also have some photographs, I encourage at least two of each of those pieces so that we can see some um, development of the particular medium. Um, I do hey, understand. Hey, Laura, this. I hate yes. to interject. I'm on to page two of aggregating questions. So I just yeah. want to give you a couple of minutes to, to wrap up so that we can get to as many as we can before we have to wrap up. Absolutely, not a problem. So that is our portfolio process. Again, it's not required for admission. I always encourage students to, in, to go ahead and submit their application, get their transcripts over to us, um, and then we will work with them to get to the portfolio process. So with that, I will wrap and we can get to your questions. Thank you. Let me just pull up some of the questions here. We have some really good questions that people have been asking. Um, okay, so um, first off, if you could all respond to this, if you have not done so already, um, some teachers have been encouraging students to take multiple art classes in the same discipline, except for example, like photography. 
to achieve scholastic awards, but it seems as if colleges want a variety of art classes, how should students be guided in selecting the best possible classes for art school admission? And if you haven't already spoken to that, if you would please. I'll jump in. I, that's a great question. I think um, I touched on that we don't necessarily need to see variety. Um, what we want our applicants to show us is what they're passionate about and what inspires them, right? So if drawing is what really geeks them and they get really into and spend the most time on and therefore then have the most success with, we'd like to see that. But if that medium instead is film or animation, right? We'd like to see that. So um, I think that there has been a um, previously sort of a historical approach to our college portfolios has been variety. And I don't necessarily think that that's what we're all looking for now. In my conversations with faculty, you know, particularly for programs where, where students may not have prior experience, like animation and fashion, um, film, you know, our, our faculty say, we will teach you to be an animator. We will teach you how to make games. What we really look for is students who are just passionate about art and design. Um, you know, art school is much different than, you know, your ordinary institution. Our studio courses are five hours long. And, you know, some days our students are in the studios 10 hours. So if you're just not really sure you want to do this, then it, it may not be the place, you know, the best place for the student. Um, you know, so, you know, we look for, you know, and, you know, I think most art schools, you know, just look for that spark, um, you know, with students and, and their desire to do this. You know, we're, we're all really good at educating the students in their desired field of study. Great, thank yeah. you, John. I agree with both of my colleagues, um, especially in, with John, with what you said about, you know, we'll, we'll teach you art and design. That's why you're coming here. Um, so what with the portfolio, it is that best foot forward. Um, and sometimes too much variety really does cloud um, the review process. So I encourage students to be as consistent as possible. So, um, you know, if taking only photography classes is the direction that a student wants to take in high school in preparation for a portfolio, that is absolutely fine um, if it's going to be their best work, right? So I would focus less on, you know, making sure there is variety and more on, like Carla said, what is the student passionate about? Because what they're passionate about is what's gonna come across um, through their portfolio and through their application. And so I also really encourage um, and I don't know if this, if you all would agree with this, for students to, you know, showcase that in their statements of purpose and their personal essays as well, um, not just in their work, um, so that we can see it sort of across the board. But I, again, I wouldn't focus too much on variety and just really guide students to what they're passionate about and what's going to come across. Uh, kind of on that same uh, trend when you're talking about the application process, uh, for each college, to what extent are applica applicants evaluated by GPA or standardized test scores? And to what extent do you just consider the portfolios, the additions? Like where's the balance there? I can jump in here because since our portfolio is not required for admission, when we are looking at um, a student's file, we do have benchmarks for academic performance based off of GPA for scholarship review because we do give an automatic academic scholarship to students. Um, but if a student, like I said earlier, falls below a GPA benchmark, um, which we review for scholarships starting at 3.0, um, again, they're not gonna get automatically denied. We will just ask for more supplementary materials. So 100% we are considering GPA, um, but we're also looking at the diversity of their coursework. We're also looking at the trajectory of their performance performance, right? So if they had a really, you know, hard ninth grade year, is there uh, improvement throughout the, the next couple of years? Um, we're looking at all of that. We're not just looking at the GPA. And then, of course, the supplementary materials just helps us round out the application, hearing from um, counselors and educators for recommendations, and then, of course, hearing the student voice in their statement of purpose. Does so anybody else so, want to Go ahead, Jonathan. I know, I, you know, I think Laura covered it really well. Um, you know, we obviously take into consideration GPA and portfolio first and foremost. Um, you know, we want to see, 
within the portfolio if the student is going to be successful in that first foundation year. Um, you know, overall, you know, our average GPA for our incoming class is, is about a 3-3. Three, three. Um, you know, so students, you know, we want to see a little bit of a well-rounded curriculum, you know, knowing that our students, you know, are not the best at calculus or not the best at science. Um, you know, we have artists and so we want to see those art courses, um, you know, in, in students' transcripts and, you know, hear about the summer programs that they did. Um, you know, at more of the portfolio weights as, as about half, um, you know, in terms of consideration for admission, um, the other half being GPA. Um, we do consider SAT scores, but only when students submit, and we only encourage students to submit um, if they feel confident in the scores in which they achieved. And at CCS, we are um, looking at both the GPA, the cumulative GPA, and portfolio on an equal footing. So our programs here are pretty rigorous, and so if they they need to have that solid uh, academic foundation to be able to um, be successful here. And so we do look at those equally. And I mentioned we, we don't require or look at the test scores. The, the test scores, to be totally honest, I'll tell you why we don't look at test scores. They have never over history been an indicator of success in our programs. And I, I see Laura and Jonathan going, uh-huh, because our students are unique and different. And some may test really well and some may not, but that is not an indicator of their ability to succeed in the programs that we offer. So we do not look at that. Excellent. I'm gonna to jump to a question that's uh, not related to the application process right now since our time is limited. Um, here's a really interesting question that came up. Uh, with the constant push for students to be involved, to be involved in STEM related fields, um, especially your international students, uh, what are some of the career-oriented benefits of attending an art college? And I guess to add another swing on that, a question that I receive a lot from parents is, what are you going to do with this when you graduate? Okay, and so if you guys could speak to that career piece, I know you have in your presentations, but then try to do it once again. Thank you. I would love to jump in here. This is my favorite conversation to have with families, um, especially families who are pushing more traditional uh, career trajectories, like becoming a doctor, a lawyer, you know, all the things that we've all heard growing up. Um, and the first question I love to ask parents is like, you know, where are you spending your money? Like you've worked so hard to become a doctor and or a lawyer, et cetera. And you're going and you're buying a designer bag or you're really paying attention to the type of car that you're driving. Design is everywhere. And there are already sustainable careers that are happening and there's plenty of money already being made in these spaces. And our institutions just do a great job preparing students to go directly into them rather than them you know, getting a liberal arts degree in sociology, which I can say because I have one, um, and then happening into these spaces and into these um, careers. You know, so you know, with our 99% employment rate, that's all well and good, but really, exemplifying to parents that these industries already exist and also our world is changing, right? So creativity has never really been tapped so much as it is right now, especially coming up, you know, being in the middle of a pandemic, you know, watching your television, you watched all commercials go from people to animations because people couldn't get together anymore in order to um, create these commercials in order to push these products. So now all of a sudden you have a new niche market being tapped in order to push business, right? And these are animators, these are illustrators, these are creative people. We've had to pivot in the way that we just go to the grocery store, right? Uh, so user experience. So all of these careers already exist. So it's about whether the student knows at this point, if they want to go into a creative career. If they know that, they should be immersing themselves in a creative program. Because and I just said, oh, sorry, I'm sorry to jump in. I, I don't want, I just want to say this because of our audience, you know, our plea to you is to help us educate the parents and students about the potential of careers that are related to creative in whatever industry that is. Because I think we all know of the myth of the starving artist. The fact is we are not only our artists don't starve, number one. They, we teach them how to become entrepreneurs, how to open and establish businesses and studios that will be fully functional and generating revenue for themselves, but also allowing them and showing them the pathways 
into industries that will use and require their creative skills. So there, there are no starving artists here. Now, that doesn't mean a student can't choose that path. They may choose to not connect or not write grants or not show in galleries, right? But that's a choice. That doesn't have to be their choice. Their choice can be to be an independent artist and to understand how to work within a structure that will allow them to be successful, bring money in, support their job and their love through creativity and problem solving. And so, you know, when parents say, well, what are you going to do with that degree? I was like, well, what are you going to do with a business degree? I mean, you're going to hope you find a job, <laughs> right? But I think that if you're connected to something you're more passionate about, you are more driven to make that your career, right? So one other short thing, sorry, Jonathan, I'll let you step in about STEM. We at CCF have several programs that have been identified as STEM for international students so they can stay in the country and work through OPT. Um, and, and listen, I, the whole drive to STEM without the A, so not STEAM, is really, really frustrating because a lot of STEM students do have that creative spark that they can take those STEM learnings and transform them through art and creativity into a job that is related to STEM, but that incorporates the arts of the fall. And, you know, as, as Laura and Carla passionately said, and, and, and I can't, you know, stress this enough, there's art and design, there's design in everything. everything. You know, my cup, our phone, everything we touch every day, an artist had a hand in designing and making that item. You know, every day there's a new Netflix show, every day there's a new Disney Plus show, and artists have been involved in that process. And, you know, it, it's really important for those students to know, like, hey, you know, people are behind that and there's opportunity abound um, for students. But, you know, not all of our students go off and work for Disney. You know, not all of our students go off and do like these, you know, high profile jobs, but they work in their field and it's something that they're passionate about. You know, they, they may be selling their work on Etsy and, you know, making a living, but, you know, they're in good hands because all of our institutions do a really good job at staying connected with our alumni to keep them actively engaged, keep them networking, um, and keep them highly involved. And another thing that art schools do really well um, is that interdis interdisciplinary connections. You know, photographers work with our fashion students, our animation students work with our illustration students. So they're getting skill sets and building a network amongst themselves, um, you know, that is, extremely important when they get out into the working world. I just want to also add about STEM too. Um, at SCAD as well, we have several pro programs, 17 of them actually, where students can stay, um, do the OPT. But I think it's great for domestic students to think about as well um, and to really understand what they mean by STEM, right? Because architecture is a very STEM-based major, right? Interior design not something that folks think about, but is a very STEM-based major. Interactive design and game development, right. STEM-based major. So, you know, there's ways to, you know, for the student who is more STEM-minded, who is also creative, for them to achieve that as well at an institution that is creative. Um, and again, there are jobs tied to that. And just, I love that somebody commented on Kevin O'Leary because <laughs> I watched that too. Um, but he's not wrong. Most industries now have brought creative in-house. Gone are the days that we are contracting out graphic designers or um, folks to manage our social medias. All of that is now in-house. So even in the most you know, sterile environments like finance, finance, there's a creative department in the finance. You know, We did a project right. with BlackRock, which is a financial hedge fund company uh, looking to, to you know, diversify their marketing. So right. there are careers everywhere that require creative thinkers. And so that's well, we what we wanna, do. It, you know, our time is, is, is come to a close. We could have done this for an hour and a half. I really want to thank our three presenters. I want to thank everyone that has attended today. Um, I, we couldn't do these programs without you. Um, look for probably the beginning of next week. We'll be sending the recording out. And please do, like I said, please share it with your students, share it with your families, share it with your art teachers, because I know a lot of questions get uh, fed through them. And uh, again, thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you hosting, Jenny. Thank you. Jenny. Thank you. Bye.